All right, so we got some fresh smartphones in the house. These are the latest from Realme. I have the 6 and the 6 Pro, and you've probably already noticed that there's some extras on the table. That's because Realme has actually sponsored a giveaway. So go follow me on Twitter. I'll put out a tweet very shortly. You can have a chance to win either a Realme 6 or 6 Pro, and then Willie Do will actually get your contact details and ship it out to you. So a chance to win one of these guys. And in the case of the Realme 6, you've got a device that comes in under $200 USD. And then on the 6 Pro, you have a device under 250. This is gonna be your Snapdragon variant. We're also talking about a 90 Hertz display at that value price point. So it's interesting whether or not this device is available in your specific market, because what it means is progression towards better value for money and better specifications for your cash, regardless of the market that you're in. Okay, so let's get started. Well, let's get started with this pro model right here. So this one is an eight gig 128. It's got the Snapdragon 720G processor, a 90 hertz smooth display. I'm not sure if this is the first time that there's been a 90 hertz display sub $200 or around $200. It might very well be the first time. In display, dual selfie camera, 30 watt flash charge, 4,300 milliamp hour battery, 64 megapixel quad camera, and this one is gonna have 20X hybrid zoom with some optical at the early part. Another thing Realme has been known for is these kind of glass effects on the back with the different polishing and so on. You can get these glass patterns. First thing in the package here, we have a case to get you started. It's like a smoked clear color. It always surprised me how the budget models, the value for money models are the most likely to give you the extra case. This is the device, I'm gonna put it down for a second. Also inside the package, we have a USB cable to charge it up. And you've also got your 30 watt flash charge inside the pack. Last up, there's a little SIM card tool in there. So I'm not sure which color we've actually got here. Ah, it's like a dark blue sort of reflective. You see that little S pattern in there? Let me just remove this piece. You see, that's what they're kind of famous for. It's actually kind of cool. Being such a dark blue actually almost appears black around the outside of the frame, but it is a really, really deep blue. One, two, three, four four camera units. And if you look closely over here at the reflection, you can actually see an almost sparkle pattern inside of the glass treatment as well. Now, another interesting thing about this device is the location of the fingerprint scanner. It's actually where your thumb goes right over here. One thing that's nice about this thumb fingerprint is the fact that it has a click to it. And there's also two settings as I understand. So if you found in the past that thumb fingerprint scanners might've been too sensitive for you, you can set this to be less sensitive and require a harder press. So that's within the settings. Of course, there's gonna be advantages and drawbacks. The advantage is that that's right where your hand lands when you're holding the device, obviously in this location. If you had it on the front, maybe in display, you can unlock the device just while it's on the table, say with your index finger. That's not something that I do, but people are always telling me, hey, that's one of the benefits of the in display. That's true. Also, there's a cool factor with the in display, but then again, you're kind of nitpicking at this point if you're asking for a feature like that, given the price point. Now, the other thing you've probably noticed on the front of the device is the punch hole camera setup. So on the Pro model, you're gonna get dual front-facing selfie options, whereas on the regular Realme 6 non-Pro, it's only going to be a single front-facing camera. So that's another difference. Coming back to that idea that the camera department is the reason you might choose the Pro model over the 6, whether it's the rear camera or the front camera. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is kind of peek into the settings here because for me, the standout feature at this price point is gonna be that 90 Hertz display. Ah, all right, so here it is. You can set it up in three different ways. You can have it on auto select. It'll toggle between 60 Hertz and 90 Hertz depending on the app. You can set it to 60 Hertz permanently in order to prioritize battery life over 
refresh rate or you can have it at 90 hertz constantly which is what i'm gonna do look i've been using high refresh rate phones for a while now it's really hard to go back once you've had the experience of the, the sort of snappy flavor that comes with that increased refresh and what that gives you is this kind of it gives you this kind of twitchy nature to it all right now let's go ahead and get a feel for these cameras real quick i'm gonna place this remote so let's kick it off with the ultra wide one the one x 2x i mean you could read the the font on the remote control you can see the text on each of the buttons here is your standard focal range and here is your ultra wide so you're getting four perspectives and this is what you come to expect obviously with a multiple camera setup now one thing i'm noticing in here is that the color balance shifts on the ultra wide this of course is on the default setting i could just jump into expert mode so it does have a pro mode and as you can see i'm able to adjust my white balance accordingly pro mode looks like a better move in general i'm seeing a lot more detail here hang on let me show you that let me show you this all right in my opinion i think you're going to want to use pro mode ideally but i guess that kind of makes sense you're going to store a bigger file size so it is good to know that you have this pro mode built in. You can see I tweaked the white balance as well to match the cameras in here. What about that selfie camera? I'm already in natural, supposedly, although I'm looking a little prettier than natural. Hold up. Oh yeah, there we go. That's really me. You guys see all those lines in the face and whatnot. And we'll, we're gonna go zoom in a little for the beard hair test. They're all there each and every one. Now, supposedly there's also a macro mode on here. Do you select it? Ooh, ultra macro. Okay, let's try this out. Do I have something very small? Hold on. Ultra macro. I've always been a fan of macro photography when they bake it in, or just in general. I've had macro lenses on cameras dating back to when I got started as an enthusiast with cameras. You can see the texture of the table, the word VOOC, which is one of my favorite words in the English language, even though it's not VOOC, super VOOC. It's wonderful. Audio test. We can hang out as we're doing right now. It's kind of amazing. So you probably caught the title of this video, of this live broadcast. So it is a mono speaker setup. Well, he's been in the news. He's usually in the news. He has now decided. And as I've explained in the past, the benefit of jamming it down in the corner, you can see here, you're watching a, a relatively dark frame. And if this were in the middle, you would notice it more than if it's down in the corner. Most people that are making video content for you to watch whether it's on YouTube, Netflix, or anything for that matter, they're not gonna put some critical key component. Benefit there is it's slightly less distracting. Drawback is, of course, that when you take a selfie, you have to adjust for the fact that it's in the corner and not central, or when you're video conferencing. I just realized, speaking of that hole punch, I forgot that there's two front-facing cameras on here. The selfie that I took at first was a 1X. Oh, quite a wide one. Check this out, hold up. Look at this, that is quite wide. So this is, I mean, you could get multiple people into the frame because I'm more likely to take a selfie when there's a group of people together, family members, something like this. And it's like, hey, everybody get in the frame and someone has to take the photo, but you don't want, you can't, you, you, you don't want to be, they don't want you to be out of the photo. So now you got a situation where you could conceivably fit one, two, three, four, five, maybe six people. Let's go ahead and try out this side fingerprint scanner. Now, of course, there's a click to it as well. So here's your setting for what type of touch is necessary, which type of touch you like. Do you like a light touch or a firm touch? Ooh, it's quick. It's a pretty quick unlock. It's a foreign experience to me because of how little, how few times I've actually used a side fingerprint scanner. I mean, your thumb just lands there. It's really not bad. Now, let me go ahead and try the firm touch out. Oh, is that, it's basically a click. I would probably go for that, personally. It's in your pocket, you don't wanna unlock it. How's it, how are you gonna unlock it when it's in your pocket? You might inadvertently have your hand there. You just pick it up off the table, put it in your pocket. So I also just noticed this thing has a headphone jack right beside the USB Type-C port. And I don't have my knife, I don't have a knife. It's called Unbox Therapy, how are you not gonna have a knife? Quick spec refresh on this one. 
single selfie camera on the front, 90 hertz display. This one is probably the cheapest phone out there with a 90 hertz display. The USD equivalent on this particular device, I think is around $177. Still got the 30 watt flash charge, still got the 4300 milliamp hour battery. You still have the quad camera set up on the back, but you're not gonna have as much zoom. And of course the chip is different. This is a Helio processor instead of a Snapdragon. I'm curious about the color. Oh, it's a light one. I'm glad we can do a comparison. It's like a lightning bolt on the back. Ooh, that's like a... That's like an icicle pops up on the word Realme. And then as you flip around, it goes to the other side from like a purplish violet up through a sky blue. So much going on. This is the trend. You know how it goes. You hold this thing up in the right light. You're gonna send a reflection back. People are gonna notice you. That's the idea. The displays on these two devices look pretty comparable to me. Looks like the Pro model is a tiny bit, tiny bit bigger display. Performance wise, I know the Snapdragon is going to be most attractive to people driving the 90 hertz display. I presume either of these chips will be able to do it. As you can see here, boom, boom, boom. This of course is not incredibly resource intensive, but there have been processors in the past that have had trouble with the high refresh rate screens that are out there. You have the new Realme 6 Pro on the left and you have the Realme 6 on the right. Crazy how far we've come in smartphones, what we can get now at a budget cost, including things like quad camera, including things like a 90 Hertz display. Oh, and don't forget about the giveaway as well. Realme 6 and Realme 6 Pro, it's happening on my Twitter account. Go follow me there. It's for a couple of lucky subscribers. I'll pin it to the top of my profile. All you're gonna have to do is retweet. I mean, it's gonna be really easy for you to participate. And then Willie Do will contact a lucky winner. Anyway, so there you have it. Realme 6, Realme 6 Pro.